All right, welcome to Green Go 2025. Super excited to be here with Sharon Mills, who's the CIO at Time Magazine. Uh, Sharon, first of all, welcome to the Robert Show. It's your debut. I'm super excited to chat with you about various things that are happening at Glean. Uh, I know for a fact where Time uses Glean uh, as a product. So, uh, but before that, uh, why not uh, give a quick intro about what you do at Time and uh, also tell us about what are you uh, seeing at Glean Go? Thank you, and thank you for having me. I'm excited yeah, sure. to talk about Glean today. Uh, I'm Sharon Mills, the CIO for Time, and I've been uh, uh, at Time for about three years. Uh, nice. I lead all the technology side, uh, internal and external, so not, you're not only thinking about how do we make our employee work smarter and faster, yeah. uh, but how do we really build good products to have, provide a better user experience for, for our customers. That's very important. Uh, kind of curious to know a little bit more about before Glean. I know you all have been using it for a while now, but before Glean, what kind of day-to-day -day challenges w uh, were you and your team facing when trying to find uh, what they needed and what did it tell you about the kind of solution you were really looking for? So basically, what was the idea behind choosing Glean? Yeah, so so I, I think it comes down to one one problem, it was friction. Yep. Um, you know, we had, it's, it's incredible the amount of time that our teams were wasting finding information across emails, docs, uh, uh, Slack conversations, yep. uh, everywhere, right? Uh, uh, we have it all, but it wasn't connected. So I figured that we needed a tool that was really a smarter layer on top of what we already had versus yes. bringing something completely new. Yep. And that's where we started doing a search for like an AI powered uh, workplace search, all right, enterprise search. Um, and that's how, what led us ultimately to Glean. Um, you know, it was it, it gave us the ability to continue to work the way that we work with our yep. current work, work, no, uh, workflows, but it just made us better and smarter. Yeah, exactly. I think that is something, you know, most of the times we kind of, uh, and a lot of enterprise leaders I talk to as well, they kind of feel the same sort of thing that, oh, we we have like so, so many different conversations that are happening in day to day. There are engineering teams who have like so many different things that they're working on. How do we all be on the same page? How can we make it easier in times, uh, in, in terms of being time efficient, but also we're faster in the things that we are doing. So I think, Putting an agent to work and uh, having that layer, like you said, kind of makes it easier. Uh, I'm kind of also curious to know, you know, how did your Glean rollout uh, happen? In um, uh, you know, what what made you realize that it could scale well beyond one use case, uh, well, like one team, and have like multiple use cases? Yeah, that's exactly what I really like about Glean. Uh, right. When I look at all the competitors back then, we started looking at this back in. November, October of last year, nice. uh, which Glean was really the only one that was able to give us out of the box integration with over a hundred different platforms, right? right? So that means that we, in a matter of literally a week, I was able to integrate into every single uh, system in, in our company. Mm. It took us longer to actually crawl all the data, uh, but like actual integration was up and running right away. Right. So that's what, that's what really, give us an advantage, right? I didn't have to spend hours with my team trying to figure out how do I integrate with Salesforce or how do I integrate with uh, our HR system, right? Uh, it was out of the box. So we saw value right away. Very the interesting. First, I think it's, it's, it took us 30 days to really roll it out. Of course, from there to create an increased adoption, that's another story, right? It takes more time for culture change and people yep. than yep. to actually implement technology. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, now, just getting more into the day-to-day -day work as well. How is uh, Glean showing up in everyday workflows across time, whether it's sales, editorial, or leadership? What's changed in the how people prepare or you know search or even get things done in time? How are you kind of seeing those kind of activities? Um, it's, in it's incredible. I mean, we love it. I we started with sales. That nice. was our first use case. Nice. So we really picked like what is going to be something that we can see value right away, and yep. sales was one of them. We're, our sales team is using it for prep meetings, for account planning, for account over overview. Um, you know, things that used to take them hours to prepare, they're now getting it in a, part, in a matter of five minutes because prompts are already set up and ready for them. Um, we have our editorial team is looking at stories, uh, supporting stories for from a historical um, archive to be able to understand what happened in the past. We have. Our, our leadership team is leveraging and leaning on Glean for strategic 
um, answers. You know where nice. you know when is uh, who owns this project? Where is it? Where are we on this initiative? Very um, important. And actually, from my even a you know, user experience, um, our HR team is using it for onboarding. You know, the, wow. the, the traditional. Here's your guide to how you get on board versus. Yep. Um, asking questions of how you learn and how do you like, hey, I'm a, I'm a software engineer, how do I, you know, what are our current guidelines or processes, right? Versus having to read an entire 20 page document. I love it how it kind of all started from sales and now kind of goes to the strate strategic uh, decisions as well and you know, obviously the leadership using it, HR using it and that is what, you know, I've been kind of looking at when I look at Glean as well, it does cater to all the departments in uh, an organization. Uh, another big, you know, topic that I usually, uh, when I talk to enterprise leaders, I kind of hear is about security and compliance, yes. right? That kind of plays a very important role. So, uh, what gave you the confidence that Glean was built with the right guardrails, and how do you approach trust as you scale AI internally? Because it's all across now. So, can you share a little bit? Yeah. About so, that? first of all, trust is. Everything and Everything. more for a, a brand like Time, right? Trust is very important for us. As a CIO and ZISO for the organization, that's not negotiable. So, so true. from day one, uh, Glean gave us the, the 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 controls that we needed to feel confident about the tools, right? right. We actually run Glean on our own cloud entity, uh, using our own um, OpenAI account. So that means nice. our data stays with us, right? Which is very critical. Um, we were able to confirm that they respect every permission access for all the different systems that we're integrating. Yep. And it's also very audible. So um, it actually helped us identify blind spots in our security, uh, be like over permissive share folders that we didn't know oh. exist and we didn't know it caught. So you know, people were saying, hey, what is the rabbit has access to that information that he shouldn't have? Exactly. And when we look, it wasn't a, it wasn't a Glean issue. It was a, an overshare folder that was giving permission to the entire company, right? So those are some of the things that, we're, uh, that we know that help us keep secure and ensuring that you know, uh, trust, governance, and compliance is, is a first thought when it comes to Glean. I love it. Uh, it kind of helped you all to even secure things much more in depth. Uh, so that's fantastic. Um, also, one more thing today, we're hearing a lot about AI agents tools that just don't surface answers, but actually take actions across playing at time, right? right. Um, um, uh, uh, like across workflows. But uh, I'm curious how, what role do you see that uh, playing at time uh, and what's exciting? Or even a little daunting about the next chapter. I'm very excited about agents. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to it. I've been asking for for a couple of months now. Uh, you know, we are we, we think it's going to make us even faster than we already are. Yep. Um, I can see building agents for research. Yep. For fast checking, um, automating our event processes, which are very manual. Uh, you know, the, we have dozens of use cases that we're ready to to, to start exploring with. Like mm. right after this conference, uh, I'm heading with my team to try to work on those. Nice. Um, of course, we do have to be thoughtful about how we deploy those agents. I think there was a lot of conversations around that today. How do we ensure that we have the right controls? How do we ensure that we have the right triggers? Right. right? We want to be completely independent, but we also want to make sure that we're building smart agents that are providing consistent and um, valuable exactly. you know, outcomes. So that's very important for us. And what what advice would you have for other CISOs uh, you know, who are wanting to obviously automate things, who are wanting to use tools like Glean, uh, anything that you would like to share with them as well? I would say it's, it's start with the people, not the technology. So true, the uh, mindset. The mindset, right? yeah. It's like uh, the most common problems are going to start on the hallways conversations, on a Slack thread, when somebody complains about why are we still doing this or why this is so hard, I think those are the problems you can try to solve with AI. And when you solve those common problems, you're going to find value right away. And then the second thing is start small. Find those proof of concepts, find those pilot use cases right. that are going to bring you the most value and then you can continue to expand into the organization. I think this is exactly what you, you all did at time as well, exactly. starting with sales and then kind of and getting kind into of more uh, directions. Uh, one last question for you, uh, Sharon, is about uh, uh, the future. What do you see, uh, where do you see the future? Today we saw a lot of uh, announcements as well. Uh, what are you most excited about and what are you seeing uh, next? I mean, uh, Agents, of course, very excited about it, but I think one critical thing that Nakesh actually mentioned is agency. 
is yeah. a conversation that's going around uh, when you you know continue to work on this on this on, with this group of people is um, the ability to, for an agent to actually start executing things on behalf is versus asking. You know, right right now, all the agents that we do, they have to have a, a trigger. You have to come and tell them what to do. I can't imagine when they actually have agency to be able to do it on behalf of the company. That would be yep. very interesting. So I'm looking forward to that. Love it. Uh, these are great insights. And uh, thanks for sharing uh, all the amazing details with us and with the Robert Shaw. I uh, will keep the conversation going. But such a pleasure to host you uh, on the Robert Shaw. And uh, definitely looking for a 2.0 where we can learn more about agents and the things that you all do at time. Uh, uh, thanks once again for visiting the Robert Show. Thank you for having me. It was Thank a great you. Conversation. Thank you everyone for joining us.